In this video, I am going to talk about developing grouped frequency distribution tables. So, here I have a data set showing the number of text messages sent from a phone over the last 30 days. So, on the first day, we sent the person who owned the phone sent four text messages, the next day five, the next day one, the next zero, the next seven, the next eight, etc., etc first thing I want to do is sort out my groups and again a kind of a leading question here if I break this data into five class intervals then what would be the width of each class so to find the width of each class I want to have five class intervals um, I'm going to take the smallest value which is 0 away from the biggest value in here which is 14 I'm going to divide that by the number of classes I want to have I want to have five classes what I get there is 14 divided by 5, which works out as 2.8. Now I'm not going to have classes that are 2.8 units wide, so I'm going to just round it off to say it's about 3. Okay, so my class widths are going to be 3 units. So, starting at 1, and given that I'm going to include 3 data values in there, I'm going to have zero, sorry, starting at zero, I'm going to have zero, one, and two will be my first class interval. So let me put that into my table here. So I've got my text messages per day. One is going to start at zero and it's going to end at two. Now notice this data is discrete. Discrete data can take on a countable number of values in any given interval. So the interval here starts at 0, ends at 14. That's 15 different values in that set. <coughs> there's 15 different values in that set. And there's only 15 values it can take up. I can't take up, for example, uh, I can't send 1.5 text messages or 1.04 text messages. So there's a countable number of things in there in that interval. So after 2, the next number I could possibly send is 3. So given that we're going to put 3 different values in each class interval, I'm going to put 3, 4, and 5 in here, so I'm going to say 3 to 5. The next one will take in 6, 7, and 8. The next one will take on 9, 10, and 11. And the last one will take in 12, 13, and 14. And then I'm going to have my total on my sigma row. So we're going to go and count. So the things that are in the 0 to 2 in the 0 to 2 class here. So again I might just do a little tally here over to the side. So 0, there's between 0 and 2, so it's 0, 1 or 2. So there's the first thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, Six. There are six values in there between zero and two, so I'm just going to put that in. Put that straight in. Now look for values between um, three and five inclusive. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. There are eleven values in there between three and five. Now between six and eight, you can just count all the different things. There's one, two, three, four. data values in that class interval uh, between 9 and 11 inclusive and there's 1 2 3 4 and that 
that's it, there's only 4 in there. And finally, between 12 and 14, so 12, 13, 14. There's 1, 2, and that's all. So add up all my frequencies, we have 7 to 6, and 11 to 17, 17 to 7 is 24, 24 and 4 is 28, 28 and 2 is 30, which should make sense. And again, this value here should be the number of days. Okay, 30 days. So we're saying on six days between 0 and 2 text messages were sent from that phone, on 11 different days between 3 and 5 text messages were sent, on 7 days between 6 and 8 text messages were sent, etc. So what I've done there is uh, I've developed a grouped frequency distribution. Okay. I've put this into groups. The next thing I'm going to develop a relative grouped frequency distribution for this data. So just like before, again our text messages per day, well that's the same as the table above it, so I'll fill that out straight, 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 11, 12 to 14, we have our total here, I'll just put in my frequencies again, 6, 11, 7, 4, 2, and let's set up 30, So what we get here, relative frequency, again, well, the 6 days out of a total of 30, well, between 0 and 2 were sent. And again, it's the exact same value as 1 and 5, or 0 0.2. Here we have 11 days out of a possible of 30. I can't simplify that fraction anymore. And that's about 0 0.367. Seven out of thirty. Well, I can't simplify that fraction anymore, but it works out at about zero point two three three. There again, these are rounded off to th three places, so I might just put in an approximately equal sign. Four out of thirty. Well, that's equal to two out of fifteen which is approximately equal to 0 0.133 and then we have 2 out of 30 which is 1 out of 15 which is approximately equal to 0 0.067 and if I add all these decimals up or the fractions up I should get a total of 1 so these are my relative frequencies they called <coughs> sorry So, text messages per day, relative frequency, we'll just copy out the things from the previous table. We had 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 8, 9 to 11, 12 to 14. Add my total, or my sigma row. My relative frequencies were 0 0.2. Zero point three six seven, zero point two three three, zero point one three three, and zero point zero six seven, and they all added up to one, which your relative frequencies always should add up to. Your cumulative relative frequencies, again, we just accumulate as we go along. So the first one, well, that's just the first one, it's 0 0.2. And the first row here, and this value in here, will always be the same as this value in here. Now we start to accumulate. Well, we've got 0 0.2, we're adding on this 0 0.367, so we get 0 0.567. And again, we've accumulated 0 0.567 there already, 
Now I'm just 0 0.233. We got 0 0.8. We've already accumulated 0 0.8. We're going to add on to 0 0.133, so we get 0 0.933. And when I add on this 0 0.067, I should get a total of 1.00. So that's developing a grouped frequency distribution table, a relative grouped frequency distribution table, and a cumulative relative grouped frequency distribution table for the data set that we were given.